discuss you the designing of the doubly reinforced beam so before starting this topic i just uh, revised you that what we have learned in the last lecture so in last lecture we discussed about the introduction of the doubly reinforcement reinforcement beam that how it, the doubly reinforcement beam is the different than the singly reinforced beam after that we have discussed the analysis of the uh, doubly reinforced beam in the analysis then today uh, in the uh, sequence we are today we are continuation of the last class we will today we will discuss the design of the doubly reinforcement beam so doubly reinforcement beam is nothing like that in that we will provide uh, a member uh, reinforcement in both the uh, side of the uh, both the zones the one is the compression zone and second one is the tension zone so when we are providing the reinforcement in both the zones of a beam then that beam is known as a doubly reinforced beam so in that one so th then it comes analysis and design so as i told you the analysis of the doubly reinforced beam is nothing like that in that we only have to find out that uh, size of the beam and reinforcement is already known we only have to find out how much is the capacity of that beam is so that is the we having so on the basis of that we will classify that beam is a as a under reinforcement beam balanced reinforced beam or over reinforced beam so that is the analysis of beam when we are talking about the doubly reinforcement beam then in this we have to calculate how much reinforcement we have to provide and where we have to provide in tension zone how much and compression zone how much so that is that that is how the design of the doubly reinforcement beam is there is having difference difference than the Uh, analysis of the beam so in that so yeah, as you can see so we having the cross section of the beam like this so this is the cross section of the beam we have so this is the one neutral axis we have neutral axis nothing like that one imaginary line we have which divides the section okay so this is so if we consider this beam is a simply supported beam so in that case this this zone becomes the tension zone and this become the compression zone okay so when we are providing the reinforcement only in the tension zone first we will provide the reinforcement in the only the tension zone then if if the beam is only having the reinforcement in the tension zone then this beam is a singly reinforcement beam along with this if we have to provide the reinforcement in the compression zone then that beam is known as a doubly reinforced beam so now we in this designing of the doubly reinforcement beam and now we have to calculate how much reinforcement we have to provide in the tension zone and how much we have to provide in the compression zone so this is the we having in this one so next one we having so as as you know the types of type of problems so single type of problem we having in this what we have we have to find out the how much reinforcement we have to provide so that we have so in that what data we have dimension of the section dimension of the section means it is the the b width of the beam and the capital d or small d okay this this has to given to you this is the dimension of the beam after that external load or bending moment with this is we have so on the basis of how much load is coming on the basis of that we will calculate so if the load is given to you then span of the beam also we they will give so that you can calculate the ultimate moment bending moment how much is coming on that beam so that is if the only bending moment is given then no need of is bend is span of the beam then the material that which which material you are using which grade of concrete you are using which grade of steel you are using that is also given to you so that is the material so these these four things is given to you okay in the question and then you have to calculate the area of the reinforcement in the tension zone as well as in the compression zone now what are the design steps we have so in the first step what we have we have to calculate how much is the ultimate moment or coming on that beam design moment also we call shear factor moment also we call so that is the mu we have to calculate so how we have to calculate the mu so the only if if it is a, a, now we have to calculate mu in through through two ways if the one way is like that in that only the maximum bending moment is given to you maximum bending moment is given to you so directly what will i do i multiply this maximum bending moment by 1.5 this maximum bending moment if i multiply by 1.5 so value i am getting that is the ultimate moment sometime it is also there that they directly gave to you that ultimate moment so that also we can do like this but if the moment or simply moment or maximum bending moment what they use then it means the m they have given then we have to convert to that moment to the ultimate moment by multiplying by 1.5 or second thing is if they gave the load is span to you then you have to calculate that how much is the maximum bending moment then you have to calculate the 
ultimate moment so in this case now if, if the load also not giving to you only the live load imposed load or live load is given to you in that case we have to first calculate the dead load or self weight of that beam so that we know 25 is the unit weight of the rcc b and d is the width and overall depth of that section so through that we can calculate the self weight if that self weight we are adding into the live load or imposed load then we are getting the total load how much is coming on that beam after that if total load i know span is given to me that this is the span of the beam so through that i can calculate the maximum bending moment so if the simply supported beam i am having so in that case this is the maximum bending moment wl square by 8 or if the cantilever beam i am having in this case the wl square by 2 is the maximum bending moment so w will take the total so if that depends the cell weight also we have to calculate or not that depends on that question if the question is already giving the load which said that including the self weight or dead load then there is no need to calculate that one if it is not defined then we will calculate the dead load or self weight then we will add into the live load and then we are calculating the total load and then we calculate the maximum moment uh, after that maximum moment calculation we will calculate the ultimate moment by multiplying that maximum moment by 1.5 then we are getting mu so the, the calculation step one is that we have to calculate ultimate moment so there is a chances that they may give directly to you that you have to calculate the ultimate moment they, they will give you directly the ultimate moment is there so there is no need to go for the step number one then we start this question from the step number two or if it is given to you the maximum moment or only moment word is there then we consider that is the maximum moment then we multiply it by 1.5 and then we'll go if the load is given then we have to calculate cal calculate the maximum moment then we will go for the ultimate moment so this is how we have to do go for the uh, step one uh, ultimately we have to cal we have to calculate the ultimate moment now step number two we have to calculate the limiting moment of resistance the how much is the limiting moment of resistance so mu limiting equals to 0 0.36 x fck x u max by d 1 minus 0 0.42 x u max by d into b into d, b into d square this is the formula we have so this is the condition we have so in if uh, mu which you have calculated in step number one and mu limiting is the calculated in step number two now we have to compare these two values so if mu is lesser than equals to mu max mu is lesser than equals to mu limiting in that case we can design that beam is a singly reinforced beam so only the one condition is there then we can proceed from singly reinforcement beam to, to, to the doubly reinforcement beam when this calculated mu in the step number one is more than the step mu limiting calculated in step number two then only we can go for the doubly reinforced beam in only then that condition we will design this beam as a doubly reinforced beam otherwise we will design it as a singly reinforcement beam and that i already discussed in my earlier video so by using the, the those steps i can design it like this now after that after that i have to calculate the fsc that is the compression stress how much it is so for that i require d dash by d first i have to calculate so d dash here i am having that is the effective cover to the rain, compressive reinforcement effective cover to compression reinforcement the how much is the effective cover i am providing compression reinforcement so that i have to follow and then i have to calculate so d dash by d i have to calculate and then by using the interpolation which i discussed in analysis of beam same way i have to calculate the fsc that is the stress in the compression reinforcement how what are the values i will discuss in the later slides then after that after it's step number calculation of fsc then i have to calculate the uh, 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 step 4 which which finally we have to do we have to calculate the reinforcement so we will calculate the reinforcement first in the tension zone then we will calculate the number of bars and then similarly we will step number 5 we will calculate the reinforcement in the compression zone and number of bars how much we have to provide so for that we have the formula that area of the reinforcement in the tension zone so this is the formula we have ast equals to ast so area of the steel in the tension zone and when we are talking about the area of steel in the compression zone, then that becomes ASC. So these are the abbreviation you should be aware. AST, area of the steel in the tension zone and ASC is the area of steel in the compression zone. So this is we have. So for this we having the formula MU limiting which you have calculated in step number 2. 0.87 FY is the reinforcement grade. So from there we will get the FY. D is the effective depth we know. And X to max we can easily calculate from the reinforcement. So this similarly mu mu limiting we have calculated f by we know d and d dash we know so easily we can calculate and we can calculate here that is the ast 
after calculating the AST, then we have to decide that what diameter of bar we are providing on the basis of that one spacing and all. Then we will take it and then if that for that individual bar, how much is the area that is the A5 and then divide we will divide this, this AST by this A5 and we are getting the number of bars which we, have, we will provide in the tension zone. We will provide in the tension zone. So this is how we have to do calculate the number of bars for, a, for the tension reinforcement. After that compression reinforcement, we have to calculate similar step we have to do. First, we have to calculate ASC. So, this is the formula MU minus MU limiting FSC D minus D dash. This is we having formula for using this, we calculate ASC. And the number of bars again, similar way, first one diameter of bar we have to consider. And on after that, we divide the cross sectional area for one bar, we will calculate and we will divide the value of ASC by that a cross sectional area of the individual bar and then we will get the number of bars in the compression reinforcement. So this is how the same way we have to do. So these are the in the five step we will complete it at the end we will draw the uh, detail detailed cross sectional diagram for the W reinforcement beam and then this is how it ends the question of the designing of the W reinforced beam. So now after that, uh, uh, which I told you that how we have to calculate, so FSC we have to calculate. So FSC that depends on the grade of the reinforcement, that what grade of reinforcement we have to use. FSC is the stress in the compression reinforcement. Okay, so in that, it depends on the FE, which grade of the FE250, FE415, FE500, G dash by D we have to calculate on the basis of the ratio we will take. So FE250 comes, so always the, all the values for the, this one you can see it is all are the 270 Newton per mm square. And this, if if FE400, FE500 is there, we have to interpolate and then we have to calculate. This is how we have to do interpolation. How we have to do the interpolation, we will do like this. That uh, if we, we know the value of FSC at P, that is A. And if we know at the FSC at point R, then it is B. And we require in between. So we will do it like this and interpolation by using such formula. And then we can calculate the uh, uh, intermediate value which we require. So this is how we have to do it. So this is the interpolation we have and on the basis of that we will calculate the FSC stress in the reinforcement. If it is, if it is directly come D dash by D for me come for example 0 0.1 okay then I can directly say if FB415 for me then I will directly say 353 is Newton per mm square is the FSC for me. So that depends on the condition if interpolation is required or not required if required then we have to follow this one and similar way we have to use it. This is we have. Now I will take one problem in that design a rectangular beam in which we having the size 230 mm by 600 mm. So 230 mm is the B and 600 mm over an effective span of 5 meters. So this is the effective span is given. This is the B is given to you. This is the capital D is given to you because it is not mentioned that D is the which one. So it is directly we can say. Then after that the superimposed load on the beam is 50 kilo Newton per meter square. So this is the like load we have it is not saying anything that it include the dead self weight or dead load it is not saying anything so we consider this is only the live load we have to calculate the self weight the effective cover is given to the reinforcement there is a 50 mm it is not defined this effective cover is for the tension reinforcement or compression reinforcement so we'll consider the both side it is the same the huge m20 and fe415 grade of concrete so this is we having now wait so first uh, as i already told you that whenever you start writing the solution for any numerical first you write the given data the what data we have so 230 by 600 mm so b and d capital d is given d dash is the 50 mm so i can say small d directly capital d minus d dash that is the 550 mm okay live load is given 50 kilo newton okay effective span is given f f20 so fck 20 newton per mm square f415 is given so fy is the 415 newton per mm square and x to max by d is the 0 0.48 from the page number 70 of the is 456 so these are the given data we have in the question now i step by step so now in this we don't have the we have to first calculate the dead load we have to calculate total load on the basis of that we will calculate the maximum bending moment then convert to the ultimate moment. So first step is the ultimate moment. So ultimate moment will go. So before that we also require the what type of beam it is not defined. So any data if it is missing in the question. So what you need to do you have while you are solving that numerical or that problem. So in that case you should write there that this is this data is not clearly mentioned or not mentioned in the question and we required. So I am considering this data is like this. So for example this beam is not given the what type of beam it is. So we will consider this beam like a similar way that we considering this beam as a simply supported beam or cantilever beam that depends on you that on you should mention there and you can start writing both if you are one is considering simply supported beam and your friend is considering that beam is a cantilever beam you both are correct 
because if any data is missing then uh, then it is it is on up to you that how, how you can take it okay but whatever you are considering you should mention there that this is we have and this is how we have to solve it so now step number one we have to calculate the ultimate moment so for that first we require the self weight so 25 b into d b and d is given to me 200 and 600 but 25 unit is the kilo newton per cubic meter as i always told you that please take care of the units because if you know the steps you know everything but if you are not writing the values in a correct unit you will not get the correct answer so for that it is mandatory that you should take care of the unit so 25 is nothing like that that is the kilo newton per cubic meter unit weight for that rcc not for concrete that is for the rcc so kilo newton so b and d also we have to write in the meter so you can see i wrote here 230 mm 600 mm so that's why 0.3 and point, point two three and point six is there so i get it the cell width 3.45 kilo newton into meter live load is given to me 50 so i add it and i get the total load that is a 53.45 kilo newton now it is not defined the beam is so we have to calculate the maximum bending moment we have to require the what type of beam we have so here i am considering this beam as a simply supported beam so so you can see that i wrote here that it is let this beam is a simply supported beam so for that beam the maximum bending moment formula is wl square by 8 so now our wl w is already i know 53.45 which i have calculated just now and l is given to me in the question that is a 5 meter so I directly write this one, I getting it, I write the value and I getting this one, 167.03 kN into meter. So this is I wrote and then multiplying this maximum moment by 1.5 and I get the MU that is a 250.55 kN into meter. So you can see now, now I calculated the MU that is a 250.55 kN into meter. This is the step number one. If in question may be directly given to you the M value, so no need to calculate self weight and all directly you multiply that value by 1.5, you will get it like this. So that is a calculation of MU depends on the type of question. So what data is given to you on the basis of that you will follow. Sometimes it is directly also given to you. So now after that, now step number two, we have to calculate the limiting moment of resistance. Limiting moment of resistance, so for that we know the formula that is the MU limiting equals to 0.36 FCK XU max by D bracket 1 minus 0.42 XU max by D bracket close B into D square. So now all in this formula you can see FCK we are getting from the grade of concrete XU max by D from the grade of steel. This is the grade of steel B and D we already know. So now easily I can put in the value. So you can see this value when I am writing. No, no, but whatever value we are getting here that comes in the Newton into mm. Because I wrote the values all which is I am having that is in Newton per mm square or in mm. So that's why I am getting the value here in Newton into mm. So that's why now I will multiply it by I converted value into kilo newton into meter by dividing that 10 raised to power 6. Why I am doing it? Because in the step number next step, I have to compare MU and MU limiting. So MU limit MU I have calculated in kilo newton into meter. So similarly, MU limiting also I required in kilo newton into meter. That's I am getting 191.98 kilo newton into meter. So when I am getting so MU coming is the 250.55 and MU is the one MU limiting is the 191.98 kN into meter. So from there I am getting that MU is greater than the MU limiting. So we have to design this beam. We have to design this beam as a doubly reinforced beam. This is I am easily I am getting it. So doubly reinforcement beam I can design this beam like this. Now after that what I needed I required to calculate the compression reinforcement stress in the compression reinforcement that is the FSC. So for that I know the table I already discussed with you. This is the table I am having. So for that two things I am required. D dash by D and second thing is the reinforcement type of steel. So here I am having the steel that is the FE415 in this given, giving to me question. So these value I will use. These are the values which I have to use for my calculation of the FSC. So now first I will take D dash by D. So D dash by D, D dash is already given to me that is the 50 and D is the Y550. So I will take the ratio and I am getting it. The ratio is the 0.09. So 0.09 when I go into table that lies between the 0.05 and 0.1. So then 355, 353. So I will interpolate and I am getting the value. That is the FSC is the 353.4 Newton per mm square. This by interpolation. That is between the 0.05 and 0.01. This is how I am getting. Then after that, after calculating the FSC, now I have to calculate the area of the reinforcement. So first I will calculate the area of reinforcement in the tension zone i calculate the number of bars then i will calculate the area of reinforcement in the compression zone and then i will calculate the number of bars so now first i will calculate the area of reinforcement into the tension zone so this is the formula we have 
as I, as I discussed with you in the design step, same formula, all the values I am having, I am limiting calculated in step number 2. F by from question, x u max by from question, m u is from step number 1 f u limiting in step number 2 f y question d d dash all in question so all values when i am writing i am getting ast is this one but while writing the values again i am telling you that you should take care of the units you can see when i am right i am i am putting the values in this first part of the ast formula so mu is in 191.98 kilo newton into meter and other f y is in newton per mm square x u max is again mm so what will I take care? I will convert this value again into Newton into mm. So that's why 10 raised to the power 6 I multiply. Similar, similar thing I have done here. So this is how I have done it and calculated this AST. That is a 1535.33 1, mm square. This is I am having. Then after that calculating the number of bars. So I, I taking 20 mm diameter bars so for this. Then A5 for me is the pi by 4 20 square. So dividing it in 4.89. So I will say that I will provide 5 bars of the 20 mm diameter bar as a tension reinforcement in this beam. So this is how the area of the steel in the tension zone I have calculated and how much is the number of bar I have to provide that I have calculated. It's very simple. Now after that is this one then I have to go for the step number 5. In that first I will calculate the area of the reinforcement in the compression zone. Then I will provide the then I will calculate the number of bars. So formula we know. This is the formula which I discussed with you. Which I discussed with you here. That ASC equals to MU over MU limiting. FSC D minus D dash. All the values. This is from step number 1. This is from step number 2. This is from the step number 3. D and D dash is given to me in the question. So I will put the values taking care of the units. Because these two values in kilo newton into meter. This is newton per mm square. These two values in mm. mm. So I convert this value into kilo newton into mm. So 10 raised to power 6 I multiplied. So I am getting ASC. Then I provided. I decided that I will provide the 12 mm diameter bar. So for that number of bar I have calculated ASC by A5. ASC, A5, ASC which I have calculated already. A5 I, for me now become pi by 4 12 square. So 2.93. So I will say that I will provide 3 bars of the 12 mm diameter. As a compression reinforcement. So this is how a discussion comes to the end. In this we have calculated the number of bars and first I reinforcement and then we have calculated the number of bars. So while going for the W reinforcement beam, so how it comes to know then when MU value is greater than the MU limiting. So this is how we have to do it and after that we have to draw such cross section also which is giving the all entire degree. You can see I have drawn cross section which is having the side 230 mm and 600 mm. Effective cover I have not mentioned but directly I say 550 so it is easily understand that this value is the 50 mm but also if you want you can also mention it that this is the 50 mm and this one is the D dash. Okay then 5 bars of 20 mm diameter is as a AST this is the AST I am having and this is the AST I am having 3 bars of 12 mm diameter. This is the end of the question when you draw this cross section then it comes to the end. So this is how designing of the W reinforcement beam we have to do. Now I will give you one or two problems. So one problem is like this. Design a rectangular beam having hemming size of 300 mm by 600 mm by limit state which carries ultimate bending moment of 350 kN into meter. So this is the B. This is the capital D or ultimate. So MU is given to you. So no need to go for the step number one. Use M20 grade of concrete and FE415 grade of steel. So material is given and D dash effective cover is given. That is a 35 mm. It is not mentioned for the tension or compression. So we consider it is same for both. So B is 300 mm. This is CN. D dash 35. So small D I can easily calculate 565. MU is also given. M20 from M FSC, FE415, FY and XU max by D. These values I am getting. Now after that. Now this is having. So now no need to go for the step number 1. Only directly we start from the step number 2. And we limiting, then comparing if it is doubly reinforcement beam, then AST and ASC number of bars. That's all. Similarly, one more question. A beam of 250 mm and 550 mm effective. If so, if this one is the small b, this one is the effective word they use, so it's a small d. Subjected to a factored bending moment. So factored bending moment again. So this value is the MU. Determine the area of steel required. Use M20 and FE250. FE okay. And assume effective cover is the 50 mm. So all the things is there. B is the 250 mm. D is the, D is the capital. Because small d 550 and effective cover 50. So capital D is the 600 mm. Then M20. So FC FE250. So F by is the 250 Newton. So XUMX by D equals to 0 0.53. 
so again in this question again mu is directly given to me so no need to no need to go for the step number one we directly we have to start this question from the step number two in this we have to calculate the mu limiting and then we have to compare it so this is how we have to we have to design a doubly reinforced beam so, but for that we have to prove that beam is that beam is a uh, mu value is more than the mu limiting then only we can design that beam as a doubly reinforced beam so this is the we having in this one in this lecture i have detailed you about the designing of the doubly reinforced beam so thank you very much in next class we will discuss the one of the go, topic of the design of rc structure elements in this how to design that element and all thank you very much